right, we have been coached on how to use microphones. For your sake, I hope we all remember the coaching that we were given. Uh, today, as we were just described, we are closing out the keynotes with a discussion uh, from these beautiful folks. I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Something that's exciting for me is that this is a representative of this entire conference. We have here in this room some of the most concentrated energy for securing the cloud native ecosystem. And that's just a really, really cool opportunity for me. I'm extremely excited about it. And we've gathered a few questions from the Twitterverse. We're gonna go through those, and then we're also going to be talking about what tag security does within CNCF. And then we're gonna get out of here and go find some lunch. So let's hop into it, uh, starting out with Ooh, I get to press the buttons. You guys are unlucky. Um, I'll introduce myself because I'm already talking. I am the most recent addition to the tag chairs. This is not to be confused with the fact that Marina is also a co-chair on this conference's committee, the program committee. She's a co-chair for that, she's a co-chair for this, two separate roles. I am not a program committee chair. I am a tag security chair, as is Pushkar, who uh, I wouldn't be able to see past these lights if you waved at me right now, Pushkar, but you are out here somewhere and you're a beautiful man and I am less fortunate for not seeing it. Uh, both Pushkar and Marina have been doing an amazing job of leading tag security over the last couple of years. Um, I have recently replaced Andrew Martin, who you will be able to see in the hallway track later on this week. And we have, also leading the community, um, these beautiful faces um, not present are uh, Justin, Ash, Andres, and Raga. Uh, Andres, you'll be able to see. Yeah, you'll, Andres, you'll be able to see in the hallway track today. What I do want to mention um, while this slide is up is that we are actually bidding farewell to Raga. She's been a heavy, heavy, heavy hitter for the tag. She's done a lot of great contributions for us. And she is, uh, she is resigning as a tag lead, technical lead. Um, but we just want to give her a huge thanks. And because this is recorded, I get to go on record saying thank you so freaking much, Raga, for the way that you have helped the community. Um, it's been very, very impactful. And now I'm going to pass. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what that's what we like. Thank you, Raga. All right, and um, let me go backwards to your face, Marina, and let you introduce yourself. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Marina. Um, you heard from me already, but um, also a co-chair of Tag Security. Yeah, uh, I'm Mike Lieberman. I'm a co-founder and. Um, CTO of Kusari, a tag security lead, as well as um, an OpenSSF. In OpenSSF, I'm a TAC member and governing board member, and a maintainer of various open source projects like Salsa and Guac. Hi, I'm uh, John Schell, uh, director of open source at TestifySec, which startup, half the people at the company are directors, so you take that for what it's worth. Um, but I'm also a uh, maintainer for a couple of projects under Intoto, Witness and Archivista, that help create uh, Intoto attestations, as well as active in a lot of other communities. I see Mike in meetings sometimes more often than I do my own coworkers. So. Yeah, and hey everyone, I'm Brian Keller. I'm an open source maintainer for Defense Unicorns. Um, I'm a tag security member and a cloud native ambassador. Thank you, all of you guys. And Brant's face isn't on the slides uh, because he's not a technical lead, but he's been a very, very uh, impactful member of the community. And we just, yeah, thanks for everything that you've been doing, Brant. Um, now, as we jump forward, yeah, I've got notes from you, Marina. Um, can you please give us a very quick overview of just what the heck is tag security? Yeah, sure. So tag security is a group of experts in uh, cloud native security, or really anyone interested in cloud native security who can come together and work on different issues. Here we have a few different areas that we focus on. Um, the first is protection of cloud native systems while providing needed access. And then the second, is common understanding and common tooling to help developers meet security requirements. And the third is common tooling for audit and reasoning about system properties. And we do all of this in a number of ways, including um, white papers that we create as resources for the community and um, 
you know, presentations at our meeting about new security projects that are out there, including and especially the CNCF projects in security, as well as security assessments that we provide for, for CNCF projects and many other initiatives that, that you might hear about today. Thanks, Marina. Um, so what we're going to do next, as I alluded to a moment ago, is um, I'm going to bring up a question from the community, and then we'll try to bring it back and ground it to elaborate more on what you just described. Uh, so the first question, very cybersecurity related, is from Bo. Bo asked, what are common pitfalls when moving from a traditional on-prem environment to a cloud-first environment? Um, who would like to tackle that? Yeah. Uh, I, I can start and then, uh, so um, I think, you know, coming at it from a security perspective, um, one of the biggest pitfalls is, is this uh, thinking around uh, trying to do everything at once. Um, it is a journey, not, uh, you know, a single step. And so uh, when it comes to a lot of these things, it's it's understanding there is there's going to be um, different threat actors, there's going to be a different, you know, I, I would say the, the thing that you start off with is a threat model, you start thinking about um, who are the actors in the system, what are the systems you're trying to protect, what, how is it different than what you're doing from on-prem, and kind of start uh, going from there. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, a critical piece of everything we do is the people. Uh, so the team you have owning and operating these applications on-prem today, hopefully you don't plan on just firing all of them and hiring new cloud experts, right? Hopefully you bring them along on that journey, you help them understand that, they, they get the training they need and the support to do everything securely and properly and you know, understand the architecture of the application and then work the right way to ensure that it's still secure in the cloud. So I'm gonna jump forward and say, um what is it that tag security is doing within the CNCF ecosystem that relates to that topic? Anybody? I mean, I think in particular, like we're highlighting that there are a lot of best, best practices to follow. Like um, if we're talking about elasticity or scalability, like what guardrails can you put in place and what problems have already been experienced that we've identified uh, and really use that as a, a guardrail so that people don't continue to reoccur the same problem. Yeah, and um, more more uh, about like what sorts of things you can see from sort of tag security is uh, so we have uh, we have various white papers, including a cloud native security white paper, which um, you know a lot of folks sort of reference. And I would say that's kind of you know when you're starting to think about how do I approach security, that's where to get started. And then there's a ton of other. Um, papers like the supply chain security white paper that when you start to focus on that, you can start to look there as well. And you can find those publications on uh, our website, which I'll put the URL up at the end so you guys don't get distracted going off and reading blogs on our website yet. Uh, next question is from Colin. Colin asked, how can an end user protect data in transit across a hybrid or multi-cloud environment? And then he's tacking on a uh, part B to the question, which is especially if that transit is continual, rather in a pipeline. Uh, there's different types of uh, pipelines, services that help with that data in transit, but let's hop into that question. You guys, I can get started on this one and then we can add more to it. I think the, the number one thing, of course, is in encrypting it like at rest and then in transit, of course, also using you know secure protocols like TLS and other um, Existing protocols, like there was, a, I think, a demo earlier in the keynotes about how to do MTLS. Um, so that's a great thing to look into. Um, anyone else want to add? Yeah, I think the other part of this is um, the, the same thing we, we heard earlier. Like, assume everything is compromised, right? If Whether you're only within your own network internally, someone is probably there listening and, and trying to figure out what it is that's going on. In the cloud, it's the same thing. In between the two, there's probably more opportunity for that sort of eavesdropping or, you know, uh, looking at there. So, you know, we um, have some things like a zero trust white paper that's gonna be coming out soon and other things like that that are gonna be really helpful in people, I think, understanding and learning about those topics. Awesome, so you knocked out the uh, follow-up question there, so let's go on to the next one. Uh, this one is from Ali. Uh, thoughts on secure de development practices, secure development practices. Sure, um, so I'll, I'll get started uh, and, and we can kinda open it up. Um, so uh, I'll start with, hey, we have actually a couple of white papers, one um, called 
uh, you know, the supply chain uh, sort of uh, security white paper, which which goes a lot into secure development practices, because um, you can't really sort of uh, secure runtime um, without first sort of securing what how you're developing, and as well as uh, we also have a, a thing called the Secure Software Factory uh, architecture, which is another white paper that sort of thinks about how we kind of approach building, and so. Um, I would say, uh, you know, that's where you sort of get started, but like some practical things and, and you know, I think there's a lot of uh, different benefits. So I'm, not, I'm just not going <laughs> to limit it to three. Um, but but uh, I do think that um, it really does come back to the people and it comes back to who's in your environment, who is actually doing the development, are you perform, you know, are you doing the correct access control for those folks and so on and then are you following all the sorts of normal best practices like code review um, and, and those sorts of things. Yeah, I mean I'll jump into with like the people here are the most important part. We've heard shift left mentioned a lot over the years um, but we're trying to reduce feedback loops they're trying to reduce the tossing it over the wall. And I think the benefit to Sec DevOps um, and kind of those secure development practices is to just have those teams coupled together in such a way that you can get that feedback loop quick. You can adjust if there is a problem or if there is an adjustment that is necessary. Uh, and I think that can result in a lot of, you know, psychological safety and making a decision, adapting to the outcomes and then moving forward. Yeah. Um, on the topic of secure development practices, can you tell us anything about how we are supporting projects in CNCF to enable and encourage and incentivize anything on that topic? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So first of all, we have um, a, a couple of white papers and best practices um, that the projects can follow, um, especially the um, supply chain security best practices white paper, and then a separate one for the build environment. So what's that one called? Software. Yeah, the Secure Software Factory um, as well, which also has a reference implementation, which is hosted by our sister organization over at OpenSSF. Um, in addition to that, I think yeah, we, we work with CNCF projects as part of the, um, the security assessment process to talk to them about um, what they're doing um, in this space. Um, yeah. Yep. yeah. And one quick shout out, uh, if folks want to enforce all of these practices, take a look at uh, the CNCF project in Toto. Yes that. Uh, okay, this is a big question. I'm going to throw this one to you, Brant. Uh, defense unicorns, this is a national security question. I feel like that's just like right up your alley. Uh, so Ryan is asking, uh, considering that open source software is being adapted by critical national security organizations, um, and this is globally, not even just within, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, no, I do know Ryan's from the US, but uh, the question is, when brought into a critical national security context, how do we plan on ensuring that malicious packages or dependencies don't make their way into deployments or secure classified environments? Yeah, I mean, I can get it started. That's a very large, broad topic. Um, but I think overall, like, there's an enumeration piece, and we think about SBOMs first and foremost, but I think there's, like, enumeration of the packages and dependencies at many different layers that um, can help us with identifying like the the actual runtime component versus dependencies versus libraries versus like any other piece of the puzzle that ultimately all rolls up into that secure classified environment. Um, there's another layer that I think is like direct attribution. We can't be analyzing the thing that lives out in a like public location where it could be changed or modified maliciously or, or otherwise uh, and expect that the results of ha our scan of that um, is not anything more than a point in time and or maybe a incorrect redirect. Um, and then the last piece I think is just a continual loop over some of the practices we see mentioned even in like the Zero Trust white paper um, coming out which is kind of like a continual process of like analyzing, um, moving from analyzing into uh, the like I would say um, packaging collection point and then the controlling point. And so from like the controls perspective, we can think about yes, like it how it's available in public facing, but also on the other end um, for 
the, the runtime component when it's moved over to those classified environments and ensuring that there's no drift. So go back and rewatch that answer when this is on YouTube. <laughs> Um, dependency management is a huge, huge element, and depending on your environment, there's so many different variables there. Uh, so we are out of time, so we're going to run through Puerco's question. He's punching us in the face with this question. Um, is Puerco, are you here? Yeah, Puerco's here. I know you're here. I saw you. So Puerco is saying, we've been building security assurances into cloud native ecosystem. We've been signing, making S-bombs, doing provenance attestations. Now we're doing VEX, uh, the vulnerability exchange. But we have a weaker story when it comes to verification. Projects across the ecosystem could benefit from consuming these types of artifacts from each other. How can we do that, especially when we're talking about scaling it? Yeah, I think the first step here is making the verification tooling super easy to use. Because I think if, if the verification tooling has a lot of false positives or if it, um, you know, it's hard to, hard to get set up in the first place, projects aren't going to use it. They have other things to do. They want to make sure they can ship their software. Um, and so, yeah, I think the first step is just making the tooling super easy to use. And then the second step is... Um, it's just creating this norm in the community, making it so that everyone is using it, everyone, it, everyone encourages each other to use it, it's in, integrated into these best practices. It kind of becomes part of the discussion around SBOMs. It's not just how are you generating an SBOM, but how are you making it easy for folks to consume your SBOM. And we will be here. We are not running away or disappearing. So if you guys want to go in depth on any of these topics, take advantage of the hallway track. Uh, if you want to see more about what we have produced and published, and uh, now we are trying to relaunch the blog. So if you want to see more opinion pieces coming out of Tag Security, that URL is on the screen. It's tagsecurity.cncf.io. And we will see you guys around the conference. Thank you so much. Thank you to the panelists. This was really, really fun. Thanks, guys.